Hello, beautiful souls. How are you today? It is July 10th, 2024. Can you believe it? I don't know about you. Most people now are seeing the time speed up. They're feeling it. They're noticing it. Um, and it's a real thing. I cannot keep up with what day it is. Actually, I always feel like I'm further down the calendar than where we are on the calendar. But at any rate, I know there's been a lot of energies happening. There's been a lot of chaos in the world. Um, there's been a lot of fear mongering. And for that, I just say that if you're on the Ascension journey, that chaos is not for you. P pivot away from that. Go within, settle yourself, ground outside and connect to your guides. That's where the truth is. I'm going to give you another video follow-up to a Truth Resonates podcast. So this is going to be the video follow-up for episode nine on Truth Resonates podcast. If you haven't checked out my podcast yet, please do so. It's on almost all players that you can listen to podcasts on. Um, the link is in the description of my videos as well. And this is the video follow-up. Um, because I definitely don't want to exclude my audiences on the video platforms as well. So the, the, the theme of this one is love wins when you allow it. Love is the strongest power. And I know I had heard that in the past and, and I don't know about you. I only speak for myself. I know when I heard it, there were times in my life where it sounded a little flippant, you know, and, um, like now, right. Where, um, people will respond to something that you're going through and you don't know where to begin. You don't know where to start. And they tell you to start with love. And in that moment, you don't have love for the situation. You don't have love for the people, the, the, the effect, the events of the situation, so it's shadow work, right? But love truly is the most powerful transformative energy that we possess. And it should be used for the greater good. And we really need to lean on it more. There's not enough love and way too much hate, in my opinion. So we started to, as a group, um, received messages that it was really important that the guardians send out love waves because we had been dismantling and neutralizing dark strongholds for quite a while now. And these beings were, well, they needed healing. You know, they were, they were trapped. Their energy was trapped. Their essence was trapped. Um, many of them had been lured into these scenarios in the time of their life stream and they didn't um, overtly do anything to um, cause the situation. Uh, there's a percentage of those that were soul contracted to be in that type of scenario, but some were just opportunistic um, events for the dark side. And they need healing and they need love and they need compassion and they need kindness and so um, we found that that was extremely healing and well-received, not just for our planet and people, but for many other planets and, and galaxies and, and many other space races. We, in fact, we didn't realize the effect until the messages started to come in from these planets that we had never heard of and beings that we had never in interacted with before and how grateful they were. So I'm going to be referring to my, um, my show notes from the podcast. So I make sure I don't go off and miss something really good for you. Um, so we started getting messages back and Archangel Michael and Archangel Metatron was coming in saying, keep doing it. Like we are so busy and, um, we have so many that are souls that are crossing through the gates coming in for healing and being well taken care of the beings that are from other space races are being sent back to their home worlds for healing. And, um, this is a great, you know, they want to be healed and they want to trust the light 
and they have a long way to go from where they've been to where they, they absolutely want to go. But it is very, very beautiful that they, after all this time, um, run to be healed by source light. And this is a good segue to my, my next book. Um, the way that that book actually came about, the the bulk of the content was created a couple of years ago when I was having a conversation with Mother Sophia. And I was like, you know, in my upbringing, I only ever heard about Archangel Michael and maybe Archangel Gabriel. That's it. I didn't know about any of the other archangels. I didn't know how many even existed. And as I started to realize that there was this wealth of assistance in the archangel realm I said like just jokingly one day I said you know it seems like there's probably a lot of archangels sitting around on the beach somewhere with their feet propped up just waiting for their name to be called and I say that because they are 100% controlled by universal law they cannot intervene until you ask them call them in and ask them for assistance so if you only ever know Archangel Michael's name, you're only ever going to call on Archangel Michael. And that's what my point was. Like people are always calling on Archangel Michael. And there's this entire other legion of angels, archangels. And that if they, they, if people knew about them and people knew about their own archangel, guardian angel and angelic team, then they would have more names to call on. And Mother Sophia came right back in and said, absolutely, you need to do this. You need to make sure that this information gets out. And so it became a guardian angel project. And um, it's it's really just, you know, a, a big piece of a gap in, in I think, in information that we're not given um, growing up that you're born under the protection of a guardian angel and you can know their name and you can um, communicate with them and ask them for direct guidance throughout your life. They're with you all the time. They're waiting for you to realize who they are and call them in. And I think that's really beautiful too. So stay tuned. That book is in process. (laughs) Um, so grandpa Ken, AKA St. Germain, um, is in this time frame of this, when this actually occurred, um, this was in the end of last year. Uh, we were getting a lot of information from him, um, but his many important live streams that he had, and some of it was developed into videos, which you may or may not have seen. And I'm just going to run through them because I touched on them in the podcast. So information that he gave um, that helped to create content was for the Orphan Train, um, Divine Feminine in DC, um, from Orphan to Super Soldier and truth or freemasons and he was also very integral he still is um, we worked together to develop a lot of the founding fathers information because um <clears throat> he is and was a walk-in soul for a few presidents as was i as was another brother um who was the walk-in soul for jfk and and We have another brother that's the walk-in soul with DJT, you know, so we're definitely um, on a soul level. Our family is very um, connected and has been for a very, very long time in the different levels of administrative government that we have here and really around the world. So one thing that we recently had to reconcile with Grandpa Ken was his live stream soul contract as Jacques St. Germain, because that was the life that was a negative polarity life. And he was turned as, uh, or to a vampire and became Count St. Germain. And this lasted for hundreds of years, this live stream, because of the vampire um status this live stream and it also affected many of our other family members or many of our other divine masculines my twin flame many of our my sister's twin flames were all recruited and turned and so in this time frame in this time period we had a huge separation where 
the divine feminines were um, excluded from the divine masculines that had been turned to vampires. And um, we were trying desperately to kind of save them from that life stream. And uh, ultimately we did. So it was hundreds of years. There's incarnations that, that were affected by this. Like I said, the, the twin flame unions were pulled apart. Um, ultimately the divine feminine who we were all in that time frame um, referred to as witches, because of course we were doing energy healing and it's not understood. And so anything that doesn't fit into the, the biblical terms of healing was, uh, you know, dark satanic witches and what, whatever. So us witches, <laughs> we traded soul fractals to the dark strongholds in exchange to have our divine masculines returned. And because they were all vampires, they all had to be vanquished. And then we uh, all transitioned out of those lives and went to be healed by the archangels and then had the opportunity to incarnate again. And the reason why St. Germain chose that was because there was an immense amount of knowledge that only a being living that type of life could acquire. And it, it was knowledge that we needed now or in the recent past anyway, to assist us in, in conquering that aspect of dark creature that has plagued our world. And so it's dark, it's ugly. Um, you know, lots of things happened that had to be healed from and reconciled, lots of traumas. Um, but the the underlying reason for that soul contract in that life was to gain knowledge that would then, once that live stream ended and they transitioned over, then they could share that what they learned and it would help us down the road. Now, coming into this life, um, none of us had memories of that. It came, you know, rather recently, actually. But we we have a level of understanding now that we would not have had a level of understanding then. Like if we would have, if we were born with this knowledge, I don't know that we would have understood why. And um, to know now that that was a truly selfless act to soul contract, to have that horrific existence, to gain knowledge, to then use in later lives, to help, um, to help vanquish the darkness and I just love him and I, and I send him love and gratitude, um, all the time, but I, I hope that you do too, because there's still so much judgment. Um, when you see, when people see these creatures, when they realize that so-and-so, you know, had an affiliation with the Freemasons, let's say, uh, it was grandpa Ken who brought it to my attention that it's not the Freemasons itself. That is an issue. It is the power, prestige, and protection that the Freemasons afford, which draws in these deviants who use that power, prestige, and protection to hide behind while they commit crime, while they commit horrific acts against humanity. And, um, and so it's not associated with a level, which is what I thought too. And uh, there's good and bad in all levels and there's good and bad in all um, subsections of the Freemasons. But it's it does lure in those who are looking for a bit of anonymity, but also protection from their, their deviant behavior that they would not have otherwise. So um, when we go through understanding that we soul contract negative polarity lives as well right we, we we were not all angels in every incarnation and we're not all victims in every incarnation sometimes we we soul contract a negative polarity life that that we play the role of the of the villain and that is hard to, to hear sometimes it's hard to deal with sometimes it just is 
something that we have to LFG. You know, you have to give love, forgiveness, and gratitude for that experience and let it go because the karmic board and yourself decided that this was the life that was best for you in that, in that now moment. And it serves a purpose. It serves a higher purpose. So I'm, I'm always astonished, but I'm very, very grateful at all the lives that we have had a, an opportunity to play a role in or have interactions with, because it brings us all to this now moment, right? None of us would be who we are today without going through all the events of our past and our past lives as well. So this is also around the same time frame that uh, we had a very large purge in our soul family. I don't know why the lighting is changing. <laughs> be right back. Okay, I just had to clear my device real quick. Um, so we had a lot of soul family members. And by that, I mean siblings, um, mostly, that a couple of aunts, soul aunts, um, who had been manipulated by ex-crew members, um, ex-crew members who um, left either because of their egoic mind made them believe that they didn't need to do the shadow work or that they were beyond it. Like they had done some shadow work and they thought they were just finished. And then as other things came up, they were in disbelief and did not want to um, even entertain the idea that there was more shadow work to be done. And that does happen. People get very weary um, when they're going through their shadow work process, because it's not a checklist. You don't, you don't get handed a, a, a 12 point checklist and then you're like, okay, now you're done because it, it is a journey because as we go through, uh, we look at it as layers. And as we go through peeling these layers of these onions, um, you can get through the first layer complete, completely fine. And then you keep on going down the road and next thing you know, something else happens and it is a trigger back to this same event, but a deeper layer you didn't recognize before because you weren't ready for it yet. And so it truly is a journey. And, and to understand that, I think, really sets you up for more um, accepting of the journey instead of thinking that I'm going to do my shadow work today and I'm going to be better by tomorrow because that's just not how it works, unfortunately. It would be so much easier if you could just have the checklist. It is not that way. So I I think we all felt, but I know that just speaking for myself, I really felt like when we encountered soul family members, um, by and large, most people had the same uh, the same stories, not details, of course, but many of the same stories where um, they had a really trying childhood some of them had childhood trauma um a lot of them had you know relationship trauma and earthly family tra trauma and so when we all found each other in whatever way that was um we i felt like we weren't going to be separated again i felt like realizing who and what we were to each other and all that we had gone through and survived to be here in this now moment would be a bond that would surpass any trial, right? And that was really um, probably a little romanticized on my part um, it, because that's not how it played out. It's just not. We had a lot of beings, a lot of soul family members that were 100% loving, compassionate, kind, uh, and trustworthy and really from the get-go and then we had others who were who were determined to remain very connected to the matrix they uh they remained very connected to beings that were not in their highest and best good so uh, you know npcs and ops um and it's because they were siblings or they were um like earthly siblings or they were children or spouses and uh, also soul contracted and they were unwilling to do the shadow work there because it, it gets very complicated as you can imagine. So when we were 
connected in that way, I thought we were going to overcome all these trials together, you know, because life is hard whenever you're isolated and you don't feel supported and um, in whatever circumstance that, that comes about, but I wanted us to lean on each other because of course we're soul family. We had incarnated in these soul pods for thousands and thousands of years. And I wanted that to be the the driving force, right? I wanted that to be the thing that made um, the biggest difference. And it, at the end of the day, it fell short for some because they were looking for something more tangible. Like they were looking to be saved and not willing to save themselves. And that's the, that's a big thing. You know, you have to realize that yes, while we all come together, we save ourselves and in doing so we save each other. It's not the other way around. You don't save others. And then they save you. Like you have to save yourself first and foremost, and then, and then align with, with those that are also saving themselves. So in truth, it's the free will choices. And when your free will is being strongly bullied by your ego and you allow it because of fear and you have that fear because you have not dug in deep enough on your shadow work, these are the consequences of your free will choices. And they are always honored. You know, when someone says, this is not for me, I'm not doing it. Okay. I wish you the best of, of um, blessings on your journey. I, I don't have anything else to do. Obviously, it's free will choice. So in this time, Aurora, my sister, received this message from Mother Sophia. It is imperative to your ascension and transition that you do your shadow work. Avoiding or ignoring it, well, that makes you susceptible to being manipulated by the darkness. No one guaranteed that the work would be easy, fun, or all sunshine and rainbows. It is your darkest shadows where you find your strength and will. You always have a choice. Always choose wisely. And I'll I'll touch on something. When she says um, what you're avoiding makes you susceptible to manipulation. I've, I've said this a thousand times. The darkness is evil, but not stupid. And they have abilities too. And so they can pick up on these topics, these subjects, these aspects of your shadow work that you're avoiding, that you're consistently being triggered about, but you're not wanting to do anything about them. And um, that's where the, that's the, where the door opens. That's where the window is open, the opportunity for them to come in and exploit you on that aspect. And if you have been one of those people that had been on that, you know, really high ascension path journey. And then all of a sudden you fell off that nine times out of 10, that's exactly what happened. You had some fear-based doubts or resistance, and it was tied to some shadow work you were resistant to doing. And that was just enough to invite in your ego to tell you exactly what you wanted to hear in your brain to make you feel better about not doing the work you should do to free yourself from the matrix. And it's a very unfortunate, but also very true uh, and unfortunately repeated over and over and over again scenario. This is from Father Yogananda. Do not get discouraged. Continue the LFG of things, which is love, forgiveness, and gratitude. The time to ascend will come soon. Just keep working on yourselves. I get that some of you are disappointed, but please do not dwell on that, which is low vibration. Focus on maintaining high vibes. It was during this time in early December, 2023, that there was rampant trickster energy. So trickster energy actually comes from within you. It's not sent to you like um, like a, an entity or an implant or a curse or anything like that. This comes from your doubts, from your resistance, from your judgments and uh, your ego develops trickster, fake um, trickster source, trickster higher self, trickster guides. So if you're really leaning on um, your higher self to make decisions, uh, and that happens a lot. People don't have the trust in themselves and their own intuition to make their highest and best choices. They feel really, really lost. 
And so they tether to their higher self so much so that they no longer remain in a state of neutrality. And that neutral state being off balance makes them susceptible to being manipulated by the trickster ego, which the trickster ego just hides behind the label higher self and then is very manipulative and is very, um, you know, it can be condescending. It can give you messages that make you feel less than or not good enough. And your higher self, your true higher self will never give you messages that are biased are manipulative or make you feel less than because your true higher self is the culmination of the wisdom of all your lifetimes, all your life streams and is in a place of neutrality because their, their highest and best good is your highest and best good. And they align to that. So, but they, but they on that, that information comes through the filter of free will choice. So that's why when you ask your higher self, some questions, you may not get an answer because you have to get there on your own. And, and that's a difference. That's a really big difference between trickster energy. Trickster energy can't wait to tell you what to do. Higher self, true higher self is going to be very reserved and sometimes not answer you at all. So that takes discernment and it really takes the support system of your soul family. And another repeating message that, that mother Sophia and gran, which is white Buffalo calf woman has given us over and over and over again, when these things come up is not to turn away from your soul family, because we're the ones that have been together for millions of years. And you're, you're sacrificing that for a relationship you've had ju just a few earth years and to forget the label, because this is the truth of the matter. Many of our children on earth that we have, that we deliver, that arrive, the soul of that being is a sibling or a different type of family member, not a child, because they're older souls. Like you did not birth, you were not given a brand new soul in this time frame because we need older wisdom and older souls. And so there's many in, in our soul family that have their earthly children are on a soul level siblings. And that is so that the, the wiser sibling, the wiser soul of our soul siblings are there to help the child um, navigate this time frame. So it, it truly is just a label. It's a label that was chosen in order to have a closer connection to that energy body that is known as your soul sibling aunt uncle, whatever. So when a transition would occur, let's say the whole family transitions, going back through and being healed and then going back to their original selves, you don't transition and have your, those earthly children with you. They're their original selves. They're your siblings. That incarnation was for this life and this life only. So that's why you're like, for me, uh, the the soul contract of the earthly being known as Nicole that stays in this lifetime. When I transition out of it, it stays here. That's not who the essence of who I am. The essence of who I am is Andalusia. That is my soul. That's my soul essence. So if you want to know any, any more deep in depth about that, I kind of went off on a tangent. Um, it's in my book, Sold or Soulless. And I welcome you to check that out. Link is in the description and it's on Amazon. So, uh, we had a lot of trickster higher self, trickster source and trickster guides. And this became very, very frustrating for those that were, um, dealing with it because number one, it happens because you're not, you're not addressing some shadow work and that shadow work is producing doubts, judgment, and fear. Then you come in with trickster energy and you get this, this affinity for the trickster because it's feeding you what you want to hear. And then you turn on your, on your soul family who's giving you truth and you go, no, that's not right. You're not telling me the truth. You just don't want me to be blah, blah, blah. I don't know. They all have a different thing, but the gist is that they trust the trickster energy because it makes them feel warm and fuzzy and it doesn't push them to do sh shadow work. They don't want to do the shadow work because the shadow work doesn't feel good. So then they turn away. So it's, it's a double-edged sword really, you know, and uh, there were times where they just kept 
a trickster energy just kind of keeps you chasing your tail. Oh, look at this problem. You got to take care of it. Oh, look at this. You got to take care of it. Oh, look, now you got this. And it keeps you busy from being grounded and centered so that you can determine that you're being tricked. Like that's the whole thing, uh, which is not a far reach from what our current cultural societal patterns are if you think about it right they want to keep you looking at all this chaos and all these disasters and all this fear mongering so that you stay in a fear state so that you don't get centered and grounded in a pay in a place of peace and calmness connecting to true power of source so that you can find your truth that is not what they are telling you so anyway we became pretty proficient at dealing with trickster energy and there were those who were in their ego and then bol bolstered by the ego because this is all trickster. It's all, it's all from the ego. And they left. They left because of that. They left because they didn't want to do shadow work. They left because they, they thought they were better than that. They thought they were b above that, you know, and it is a journey, but it is a journey of, of really everybody being on the same playing field. Like no one really has a leg up on anything. Um, and that's why Yeshua likes to use the term inner stand instead of understand, because none of us are under anyone and the, including Yeshua. And, uh, we, we speak to each other as, um, you know, there, there's all sorts of past life relationships, you know, in, in a past life, I was one of the incarnated children of Maggie and Yeshua. I talked to Maggie and Yeshua, not as a mom and dad, because that was of that life, but we are very, very close whenever we communicate. And there's a lot of love there and reverence, but I know that my soul mom is Mama Ro. And I know that my soul father is Father Yogananda. And that's where that maternal paternal love is from me and that relationship. So it's just deciphering, you know, an incarnation versus what you have on the soul level. So I'm going to give you some tips if you are struggling with shadow work, which is not uncommon. Um, obviously, I welcome you to violetlotusenergy.com. Come there. We are more than happy to help you kind of just get your bearings so that you can navigate your journey with a good support system. But these are some shadow work questions. Like um, even if you just took five of these and worked on them over a month, you would do a huge service to yourself in really developing your own soul growth. Um, what made you start doubting yourself as a child? What aspects of my life, meaning you, do I project onto others in an unhealthy way? This happens a lot where you and your life may have been screwed over by every man you ever met. And so you have a blanket level of distrust, not because of the person you're encountering now or not because the person someone else is encountering now, but because of your past. And so that is a hurdle that you've put before you. And it has nothing to do with the being that you're in encountering. It has everything to do with the beings that you used to deal with. And so that's a projection of your own uh, trauma and not good. What is something my younger self would be surprised about me now? What emotions do I try to avoid and what makes me afraid to feel it? What am I afraid will happen if I feel it? That's a huge one. I mean, that one, it's, I put it, I have it as a bullet, one bullet, but it's three separate questions could keep you busy for a while and that's okay. It just, your level of layers is unique to you. And under embracing it because it's all happened for you and most of it happened with your consent is it's just a, a way to LFG and get through that stuff and let it go. It does not need to be carried around your entire life. Okay. Who hurt me and can I forgive them? How do I choose to show up for others, but yet fall short for myself consistently? Write a letter to a parent with everything I want to say to them. What are my toxic traits in relationships? What is one thing, what is one time I feel wronged as a child? How did I react? 
And has this affected my adulthood? And if so, how? Huge, huge. The fact that we all grew up in the time that we grew up here on this planet, we all have inner child trauma. We just do. And it's varying degrees, I will say, but the effect is so far reaching and so deep down that a lot of people want to photo focus on the romanticized, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine, twin flame union stuff. But if you really want to be serious about that, then you have to focus on the inner child of both beings because in us and each one of us, we have divine masculine, divine feminine and inner child aspects that have to be balanced. So most of us do not come to the table healed and balanced in all those aspects. How can I be kinder to myself? In what ways do I unconsciously punish myself? What is something I should forgive myself for? And this is also huge. There's so many times that I encounter uh, beings when they're first getting clear and they want to talk about what other people have done to them. And they they can't they can't have um, a sentence. They can't speak about themselves and in one answer where they don't reel in what someone else did to them. And it, what in reality, I'm checking and I'm thinking, well, all this was soul contracted. They did it for you because they actually honored your soul contract. You would contract it with them to give you this, this painful, traumatic opportunity to make better choices and to evolve and to learn. And they have to then come to the realization that they have themselves to forgive as well. And so I recommend having conversations in the mirror because until we can look ourselves in the eye and acknowledge all of the consents that we gave to people to hurt us, you're not going to fully and successfully heal those shadows. There's going to still be an aspect of that because it's the aspect that actually opened the door. And it's very, very important to do. What are the first signs my mental health is deteriorating? And that's a huge one. Like the entire culture, education system, health system, nutrition system, um, medicine, it's all mainstream media, social media, all the things are geared toward making us feel weak, disempowered, fear. And it is a fragile mental health environment i can tell you it fractures and breaks so easily because we don't have a very strong foundation of truth and so my opinion and so um it's really important to be mindful of that and also i want to just say most labels most not all but most labels of a psychiatric standpoint just like of a me medical health standpoint are labels designed to correlate to diagnosis codes and billing and not about healing okay they're just not if they want it to heal you they would find the source of the problem follow the trigger assist you in your shadow work so that you could let things go fully and completely and not just hand you prescription after prescription after prescription and tell you to do you know, this counseling sessions and these counseling sessions. And it's just a racket. It is a racket. And so realizing that you actually have options that don't include big pharma is huge. D don't subscribe to just taking a handful of pills because it's just numbing you out of your magic because most of us have abilities and the connection to source creator that can lead you out of that darkness. Plain and simple, no prescription involved. Transforming to heal requires feeling. And I say this all the time. Feeling is healing. If you don't feel like deep in the core of your being, if you don't feel love, if you don't feel gratitude, if you don't feel in the act of forgiveness, it's fake. You didn't get there. You didn't do it. You talked about it. Cognitively, you spoke about it but you didn't energetically transform and transmute that energy. It's still an issue. Feeling is healing. 
it's a cathartic energetic release that has to be um, gone through in order to get through it. You got to go through it. These are some of the things that you can transform. If you find that you're a people pleaser, try your very best to be more authentic. And authentic is another word for truthful, just honest. Difficulty saying no, set boundaries for yourself. If you have the habit of not being able to say no and you find yourself completely spent at the end of every day and every week and every month, and this has just gone on for far, far too long, then figure out what it is you like to do and set aside one or two episodes or events of time in the month or week or whatever that you are able to do that. And then beyond that, say no. This is your your homework. Um, overthinking. If you're an overthinker, then you don't trust your intuition. When you make an intuitive decision like this feels good, I'm going to do this. You got three to five seconds before your ego swoops in and talk you out of it if they don't agree. Three to five seconds to stand in your truth and back your ego the hell up. Self-doubt. Self-doubt. We are cultured. Our culture um, instills self-doubt in us on a massive level. You have to find that self-confidence and you're going to start with baby steps. You're going to decide to do something. You're going to do it. You're going to follow through with it. And then you're going to feel the feeling of that accomplishment and celebrate it. And then you do the next thing that's a little bit bigger. And then you do the next thing that's a little bit bigger. That's how we do it. Um, neglecting self-care. You give, 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 give to everything and everyone, but not yourself. Turn the tables and start giving some of that self-care that you give to others to yourself genuinely and receive it and see how that makes you feel. Um, comparing oneself to anything or anyone. You want to then switch to self-appreciation where you look at yourself in the mirror again and you give um, forgiveness for judging yourself, forgiveness for not loving yourself and gratitude for everything your body does for you. Because that's a huge thing that we, we tend to take for granted. Um, suppressed voice. If you feel like your voice is never heard or you're shushed or you're told that your opinion doesn't matter, have conversations with yourself and outside of nature because your guides and, and lots of your energy team, energetic team, spiritual team, celestial team are listening and there's no repercussions there. You can have a conversation with yourself in the mirror. You can practice speaking your truth. That way, the next time you get the opportunity, you have the words. Sometimes that's the issue. Like it's all in your heart, but you can't get the words out. So just practice and speak your truth. So even if you're speaking your truth into a pillow or the air, you're standing in your sovereignty and you're owning it. And that helps your soul free it, its power and not feel so constricted and timid. And if you strive for perfectionism, stop it because none of us are perfect. If you think that you're perfect, you're lying to yourself and others. We should embrace our flaws because they are little characteristic traits that make us all beautiful in our own special divine ways. It's usually for a purpose you have yet to accept. So there are so many pearls of wisdom that was given to us as we grew up um, that was actually rooted in Luciferianism. So discern the good messages from the contaminated messages. So look at the list of things that I, I went through and see how it affects you. How does it make you feel? Um, you have your energy body, you have your mental body, you have your spiritual body, and you have um, the physical form that you're in your avatar. And so it, it can feel different. Like you can not have any physical manifestation, but it can feel like a gut punch, right? You might feel like you got punched in the face, but you don't have a bruise in the face, but it, it hurts. You may have immense heart pain, like heart chakra pain, because you're going through, you're dealing with something that was a heart ache. It's exactly where that came from. 
it's true. It's real. You're, you can feel that I, I, when I have to go through that, I feel like the soreness from the left side, all the way to the right side of my chest. And it's like something within me trying to break free. And it's the pain parts that are healing. So that energy depletion and coral wounds and all that, it magnetizes you to trauma and, and it, trauma of others and it causes you to be in a situation where you can lose um sight of who you are and what and what you are and lose pieces of your soul and so when we are constantly ignoring our own soul growth our own soul evolution our shadow work and things that we're supposed to be doing for our highest and best good we keep putting ourselves aside we're losing little bits of our soul because our our energy essence is saying gosh you know this avatar doesn't doesn't regard me at all doesn't even recognize me what it and it's hurtful and the soul and energy essence of our being is where the pain is stored in our avatar as well but it's also an energetic um not it's probably the best way to describe it and it gets released with love and compassion and empathy and kindness and forgiveness think about that think about all your chronic aches and pains it's not going to be fixed with a pill you have to work through the trauma that caused it and sometimes most of the time we are responsible for some of that trauma so when you're being controlled and led by your ego and dark agenda you miss out on all these all these avenues to clear this stuff up and let it go instead you're just being been made to feel more more weak uh sick and disempowered and they just say you know well it's time to take change your medication up <laughs> some crap like that so those who pass on truly digging into their shadow work so that they can free themselves from those chains and shadows they're really participating in their own disempowerment and you'll hear them talk about um you know people in their life that they blame for wherever they are and whatever happened to them but they don't ever blame themselves and that's important that's that self um accountability because we do have a measure of responsibility for inviting in things in our life that do harm us because we're not doing the right things for our own core essence. So there's an entire, you know, generations of people that feel like their role in life is to disempower because that's exactly how they were indoctrinated and taught. You know, our educators, by and large, politicians, they want to just manipulate thousands and thousands of lives and people millions even if you think about um, an educator that's in a very large um, capita they can have millions of lives that they interact with and that they imprint their dogma on them and send them out into our world to do more harm than good I don't inherently believe that teachers are bad I don't think that all of them that are, have a soul want to be bad. I think that there's many good and bad in all things, all subgroups and sub sub um, types of culture. But the actual teachings of the academia is born rooted in Luciferianism. And so they believe it and they teach it inherently. They're spreading things that are harmful and it can be completely out of ignorance. So remember that the controllers that were, because we knocked them off their pedestal, gained knowledge over our timelines using Project Looking Glass in the 1930s. And it gave them the ability to, to know that if they create and implement A, B, and C, the end result 50 years later is a very weakened population, a very lazy population a population who wants apps and AI to do everything for them. So they're not using their clairs. They're not using their abilities. They're not using their intuition. They're not, they're not checking in with their gut. They're 
always got their head in a device being manipulated and being mind controlled. So when you ask yourself, how did we get here? That's how it's all been part of the program. Premeditated, pre-planned programs to manipulate an entire planet to easily do what serves the controllers and disempowers the people. But as I said before, that game is over. <clears throat> and even if my message has only reached 10 people, that's 10 people that's going to ripple out positivity. And it just takes one person with a frequency over 500 to dissipate a thousand negative frequencies. Think about that. That's why we can facilitate change without ever saying a word. Just in our positive frequency, you go out and just spread your love around, spread your light. So um, all roads lead to the golden age of miracles, Shambhala on earth and Huna Matea. So when you realize that your actions are for you, but they also help or harm those around you, there should be, in my opinion, a heavier weight placed on what you determine to do. And I don't say go about this journey because of something, some accolade that you want or a pat on the back. You want to have clear intentions. So you want to go through life whenever you say that you're, you're loving one another and that you're loving your brothers and sisters and you want to help the greater good of humanity, stop being judgmental and stop harming yourself. Stop turning away from yourself and your needs because we need you to be that the best healed, most powerful, highest frequency being you can be right now, right now. And that's what you were called to do. And that's what you contracted to do. So all you got to do is just accept that. Yes, you're going to feel some feelings from some shit that happened 25 years ago in your life. But once you do, you can let it go. And it finally is gone for good in a snap. It's done. As soon as you recognize it, the lesson that you've been avoiding for however long source erases it. It's done. The pain is gone. The heaviness is gone. The weight of it is gone. The fear of it is gone. It's just done. So if you are struggling with shadow work, if you are struggling with trauma, if you are struggling to figure out who and what you are and why you're here and how, and how do you go forward? I'm happy to help you. We are happy to help you. Visit violetlotusenergy.com. Check out our offerings. Listen to Truth Resonates podcast. Drops every Friday morning at 6 a.m. And I will see you again next time.